Hello everyone, welcome to another repair video. Before we get started, I just want to give a quick announcement that there's going to be no face cam on this particular video and probably the next five or six videos to be honest because I recently come down with a mouth infection and my face is still a little bit swollen. I am feeling a little bit better today so I thought I'd get to a video trying to get some content out for you guys and try and catch up on some repairs but I'm not going to be able to show my face because it's really not a very good look for me. So there's going to be no face cam, so it's going to be overhead camera only for this video and probably the next few videos as well. Uh, but that being said, uh, let's get into today's video. So this console has been sent by Mike from Kit Digital. So you may know Mike from kitdigital.com uh, from some of my mate Vince's videos or from his own videos as well. He had this sent in from another customer and there are a few missing traces on the USB-C port. I don't know the exact story of this, but from what I can gather, the USB-C port was damaged, and when he removed it, the traces were lifted as well. And it's a little bit out of his skill level, um, according to him, to repair the traces. Uh, now, I'm not going to say that he did it, because, I mean, I had one myself the other day, where there were several missing traces, um, and it was down to the fact that the port was damaged. Uh, it does happen, um, so it's probably it's probably one of those where it's happened by accident when the port was damaged. Um, but basically, he's included a letter with the um, with the switch, and it says, "Hi Phil, thanks for taking the time on this one for me, buddy. I did try to do it by eye, but it was a mess. The port is currently attached, and please excuse the extra solder on the legs." The customer initially was going to take it in its current state as her son didn't tend to treat it well anyway. The extra solder is just an attempt to secure the port more. The switch seems to work fine except for these traces which the customer then decided she wanted done but to be fair I haven't done a full test on it. Any problem give me a shout. I've told, told her it will be about 7 working days from the date you receive it and she's okay with that. Please let me know if your queue is longer so that I can keep updated. Unfortunately, unforeseen circumstances, I did come down with a mouth infection, so I've had this a little bit longer than uh, what was originally anticipated. Um, Mike, I'm sure, is very understandable. He is fully aware of the situation. Um, and I have spoken to him, and I did promise him I was going get, to get to it this morning, so here we are. So he's included a couple of pictures, and the first one is of the port itself. Uh, so he's taken this picture here. Uh, so this is what the port looks like with the... Uh, with the port removed so there's four missing traces so it's not too bad um, or in terms of you know my level of experience you know it's not it's not that bad for me um, I'm used to doing it uh, I've done these several times quite a lot of times actually um, I'm not going to attempt to count um, but then I'm also tempted to uh, to charge him double because he sent uh, he sent another picture with it let's see what he sent shall we <laughs> yeah <laughs> he decided to send a picture of me messing about on a live stream um, <laughs> I was showing everybody my um, my fume extractor and I decided to put it on my head because why not that's a normal thing that rational people do right <laughs> anyway um, I'm going to get to this repair I'm going to charge him double and uh yeah, let's see if we can get this thing working again, shall we? So if you do like this type of content and you want to see more repair videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications so that you're notified whenever I go live or whenever there's a new upload. Uh, I am just coming up to 20,000 subscribers and there's going to be a very special video when I do. Uh, it won't be exactly on 20,000 subscribers because I'm waiting for some stuff to come, but it's going to be pretty close. So yeah, be sure to get subscribed if you don't want to miss that video. So let's turn on this console and see what's going on. It's probably got a dead battery by now, to be honest. Uh, but that's absolutely fine if it has, because... ah, no it hasn't. I've just made a new lead a few days ago for my uh, Nintendo Switch testing. And I'm actually thinking about selling these leads. So this lead goes to my bench power supply. And what it is, is a battery connector. So it's the inside of a Nintendo Switch battery on a breakout cable and then that goes to my bench power supply where I provide it with 4.2 volts and that gives me a 100% charged battery and because I like to be a lazy technician as a lot of people will know it's on a quick change connector 
So basically, I'm going to be making several leads for my new bench power supply, which I'll probably get to a review in about three months once I've used it a little bit. Um, and it's not sponsored as well. I did buy it out of my own money, but I'll probably get to a review of that. <clears throat> but I'm going to be making several leads to this bench power supply. And basically, we've got the banana jacks on one end, and then that comes on to a quick connect or what I'm calling a quick connect. It's actually just, you know, it's just a connector I bought off Amazon. Uh, that comes onto here, and then this other side will go to my quick change leads. So for example, I've got this one, and I've made this one as well for now. I haven't had time to make any more because I've been ill, but I've got this one as well, which has got some crocodile clips on. You know, they're just uh, random. Um, but yeah, I can just switch between different leads, um, and just basically, do what I want pretty much so yeah it's pretty cool it's pretty cool pretty handy so there we go as you can see and it's as simple as that to change my leads but yeah I will show you that in action when we take it apart but I'm not sure if I'm going to be selling them yet I'm that obviously have to be made to custom order so maybe in my spare time um, I'd have to work out what the cost and stuff because I have to destroy a battery to do it as well so I'll either have to get faulty batteries or destroy a perfectly working battery, which is obviously not a good thing to do. But yeah, this switch appears to work fine when it's charged. <coughs> so let's just grab a charger. So my bench is a mess. I haven't been in the workshop for literally about a week now. Um, kind of getting withdrawal symptoms on it, to be honest. Um, and Okay, so it's not recognising a charger that side interesting uh, it is kind of expected because the port is damaged on one side and it doesn't appear to be accepting a charger on that side neither okay all right well that's fine uh, one thing we can do is just flick this off and on again and just see if it recognizes because it does do that sometimes so we can check that basically if you switch the screen and then switch it back on sometimes it picks up the charger nope okay so it's not charging but the battery is working. So the switch itself is working, which is fine. So let's take it apart then. I'll take the board out because obviously the board has got to come out. I'll take the port off, lift it off, and then we'll see what's going on with it and see what we can do about restoring those four missing traces. Hopefully no more lift off when the uh, port gets lifted off again, but it shouldn't do. It should be leaded solder, should be absolutely fine. So good to go with that. So let's just remove these screws and I'll skip through this part. Uh, I do want to kind of keep talking down to a minimum if I can because, you know, my face is still hurting pretty bad. Um, and, you know, it's quite sore. It's quite sore to talk. It's quite sore to eat. It, I, I had a wash just before I come into the workshop um, and it was sore to wash, I'll be honest. It was very sore. So... I want to try and keep talking down to a minimum if I can. So I'll skip through this bit and uh, we'll resume when I take it apart. Okay, so I'm just about ready to take the board out now. I've just got to take the ribbons out. But I just want to give a demonstration of this, uh, this bench power supply cable that I've made. So if I take this bench power supply cable here and just plug this in. Basically, what this is going to allow me to do is test any Nintendo Switch without needing... A charged battery so if I try and turn this on now and it would help if I actually turned on my bench power supply <laughs> I have Alexa set to turn everything off at 3 a.m. in the morning um, <laughs> and I forgot to turn it back on never mind but there we go as you can see it's connected up to the bench power supply and that should come up as a hundred percent charge currently drawing 800 milliamps and dropping slowly and there we go. So obviously I've got no touchscreen connected because the touchscreen connector is here. But you can see there, it's got a 100% charge in the battery there, which is absolutely great because it means now that I haven't got to, I have basically I haven't got to worry about keeping things like this fully charged up because if I need to use a battery for a customer and they don't want to wait for a brand new one, I can say to them, well, I've got a used one, I can give it to you for half price, say £5 or something, plus the fitting, um, then 
you know, I can use that without having to worry about a bench power supply. I've still got to make one for a Nintendo Switch Lite, which means I've got to buy a brand new Nintendo Switch Lite battery, because I haven't got one, uh, just to tear it apart so I can make one of these cables. And as you can see, this is, it's nice and secure. Nothing on here is going to short out. It's shrink wrapped with um, heat shrink tape or heat shrink tubing. Um, nothing's going to short out. It is absolutely safe. And yeah, it's never going to let me down. So absolutely brilliant bit of addition to the kit. I'm going to be making one for the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, the PS5 when I get a broken PS5 power supply. Um, loads of different connectors. There's all sorts of stuff you can do with a bench power supply. That's why I stress the importance of having one in your toolkit, even if it's just a cheap 40 50 pound one. Uh, I mean, this one cost me the one that I've got now cost me 170 pounds, but uh, you know, that's a three channel, you don't need a three channel for uh, basic bench power supply uses. Um, but that being said, yep, yeah, let's get into this uh, this repair, shall we? So, I'm going to take the rest of this apart. So, all I'm going to do now is just remove all of these ribbons and connectors. and two more to go i do need to loosen the fan off just to be able to remove the board safely so one thing when you're uh, when you're taking these apart you don't need to remove the fan all you need to do is just a couple of turns on the screwdriver with each screw and then the fan will wobble about enough so as you can just lift the board out you don't actually need to remove the fan to get it out. Okay, so let's take a look then and see what we're dealing with. So I'm going to put the rest of this to one side. I'm going to pop the iFixit kit back in the uh, back in the case because this one is brand spanking new. I keep losing the bits, uh, so I keep having to buy new ones. So I'm going to try and keep it safe because they cost £30 every time I lose bits because it tilts me every time I look at them. Alright, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do a couple of basic tests. And what I'm going to do is just make sure that everything's working as it should on the circuit. And then what I'll do is I'll get the USB-C port removed, tackle that, and then if there are any issues with anything else, like the P13 chip or anything, I can get that dealt with as well. So I'm going to pop the multimeter into continuity mode and I'll pop under the microscope so you guys can see it as well. Okay, and I'm going to start by taking a look at the M92 T36 area. So this is going to be the main power management IC, what's responsible for taking in power from the USB-C port and basically distributing it to different parts of the board. So this is the first failure point on the board. But first of all, I'm going to check this fuse. And yep, we do have continuity there. I'm going to work my way up the circuit. Let's check this filter. And that's good. And then I'm going to pop one probe on ground. And I'm going to check this cap here. And this cap here. They're good. Or at least they appear to be good. And then I'm just going to go around these caps. Scan them all for short. And just make sure that there's no shorts on the board. And that all appears fine. So I know the battery circuit's working, so I can completely skip that. I don't need to worry about that. So I can completely skip that. And I can take a look at... P13 USB, which is the video IC, but it also does some USB-C functions, some charging functions. So let's pop one probe on ground and just check this cap, and that appears fine. So I'm going to check these filters here, make sure that we've got continuity on these. And we do have a bridge on this one here. So now the question is, 
is this bridge on this filter down to P13 USB? Is it down to the filter itself or is it down to the port? Now the port's got to come off anyway. So no matter what that port has got to come off. So I may as well take the port off first, make sure that there's no shorts under the port, check that filter again, and then remove the filter if there's still a short on the filter. So there's definitely an issue there somewhere. So what I want to do then is I want to use some hot air on the USB-C port to remove it and basically just allow this port to drop it, drop out of the board itself. So I'm going to use 480 degrees Celsius at 40% airflow with no nozzle on the hot air gun. <coughs> and I'm just going to heat this up until the port is ready to come off. But I'm not actually going to lift the port off. All I'm going to do is just heat it up until it's ready and then I'm going to give it around about another 10 seconds to make 100% sure that all of the pins are fully molten on the port itself. So because this is a new port install it should be leaded solder or at least most of the time it is. So it shouldn't take too long to get the port off. Uh, as you can see there, that port did drop. You'll notice I'm still holding, still holding, and then eventually I'll let the port out. And there we go, so that's removed. So let's clean this up then, and let's take a look at the port itself under the microscope so we can see the extent of the damage. So from what I've seen from the pictures, I should be expecting four missing pads which should be not a major issue and as you can see I do have a bridge there on those two pins so that could be causing the bridge on that filter so what I intend to do then is first of all I'm going to clean this up and the way I'm going to do that is by using the soldering iron and just running the soldering iron across. And what I'm going to do is just add some fresh solder to the mix just to freshen up those joints, make sure that there's enough solder on each one of them to actually make contact with the port when I do go to put that port back on. So you'll notice that I'm going around in a circular motion here. I'm not going up and down or straight or you know straight across. I'm going in a circular motion to put as little pressure as I can on the port itself. Because ideally we don't want to tear any more pads. Okay, so we can clear that up properly later on. But what I want to do now is just clean this up, make sure that there's no bridges, which there shouldn't be, and then test that filter once again from the other side. So all I'm using there is 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol and just a normal cotton swab just to get rid of the flux that's on the board. And isopropyl alcohol is non-conductive as well, so it's not going to hurt the board in the slightest. It will evaporate eventually as well. All right, so that's fine. So there is definitely only four missing pads there. Um, one of those pads, as you can see, there's some solder in the middle. And the reason for that is because that pad is actually connected to the pad above it. And that pad above it is the voltage in. I'm not worried about that pad. And the reason for that is because there's three other pins that are connected to that one pin. So that's this pin here, and this pin here is also connected to this pin. It's connected to this pin, and it's connected to uh, this pin just here as well. So I'm not really worried about this one. So the main thing here is these here, but this one here I'm also not worried about because this is just ground, and we've got another three ground pins on this, uh, on this port, as well as the ground pins on the legs themselves. So I'm not worried about this ground pin either, it's just these two here. 
so basically what I'm going to do is just I will restore this trace here if I can but the main ones I want to restore are going to be these two so those are the two main ones so this pin here this pin here this pin here and this pin here are all ground and if we zoom in a little bit if I can get it in focus so this pin and this pin this pin and this pin are also all connected so these are the two that we're going to need to focus on for this particular repair so let's flip the board around and let's test this again in continuity mode now before the battery dies in my multimeter which is going to happen and as you can see there or as you can hear there there's no beep which means that, that short is gone and the multimeter just died but there's no short there it does come up open line uh, so that short is definitely cleared so what we can do now is basically just restore these traces and we should be good to install a new port and be good to go so for this particular repair you are going to want a microscope that can zoom in really far like fairly well and the reason for that is because these traces are incredibly small they're around about 0.3 millimeters in length and that is that that is no easy feat you're going to need a microscope that's capable of zooming in fairly far with a crystal clear image so most usb microscopes i wouldn't recommend it for this particular job uh, but you know you can use any kind of optical microscope and it should be absolutely fine so the jumper wire i'm going to be using is my typical microwave wire which i use for pretty much all repairs and all i'm going to do is if i just turn this around because it's going to be easier for me to work on it all i'm going to do basically is just run a jumper wire from the solder point and just trim it at the end and as you can see that is very very small it's a very minute amount of jumper wire there uh, so i'll basically just solder it to the end and then once i've soldered the jumper wires i'll secure it in place with conformal coating and that will basically glue it down and allow me to use hot air on the port and then i can just basically tin the port or the pins on the port and solder a new port into place and it should charge properly it should also dock hopefully if everything goes to plan so i'm going to start by adding some flux so just a little bit of flux there i know that looks like a lot but everything looks absolutely huge under the microscope when you zoomed into this level i think i probably zoomed in 20 times on this or maybe maybe 15 so what I want to do then is I just want to basically tin this jumper wire. So I'm going to tin a fair length of it. So all I'm going to do is just scrape the jumper wire with the soldering iron. That will expose the coating on the outside of it. Or rather remove the coating off the outside of it. And that will allow me to use it to actually solder with. So then what I need to do is actually solder this jumper wire to these points. Now it's going to be a bit difficult to see because of the glare and things. But all I'm going to do is just try and tap it into place. It is very critical to get a clean soldering tip for this. And I should probably be using the micro pencil for this and I will if I do struggle a little bit. But with that one it seemed to go absolutely perfectly first time. But once I've actually tacked it down into place, or what I call tacking it down into place, what I like to do is hold it with a pair of tweezers and just tack it down properly so I know that it's secured, or solder it properly so I know it's secured. So you'll notice I completely skipped that end pad, that's like I said because it's a ground, and why waste more time than absolutely necessary if you don't need that pin for full functionality. So there's jumper wire number one and now like I said all I'm going to do is just come in with a blade and trim it off at the very end. 
So I'll clear that up just so as you can see. I can see in the microscope because I don't have any glare, but the camera does. So I'm just going to use some isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush, just clean up that burnt flux. And as you can see there, I'm scraping backwards and forwards, side to side. And that jumper wire isn't moving. Now that jumper wire will move if I was to use hot air, but that's because that solder would melt. So I still need to secure that jumper wire in place. But that jumper wire is about as secure as it's going to get. Without the solder mask there. So ultimately, I am very happy with that jumper wire. And I can move on to the next. I'll just dry that off just so I can see it properly. I'm going to make 100% sure that's secured and it is. So I'll add a bit more flux. And I am actually going to just change that up a little bit. There's a little bit too much solder on the edge. So now that I've got it in the tweezers, whoops, I did have it in the tweezers. But now that I've got it in the tweezers, I can manage the jumper wire and position it perfectly. And that should be absolutely perfect. And yep, I am happy with that. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to run another jumper wire now to the next point. And I probably will restore that fourth pin across as well. Just because it's not going to be too much more work to do so. Okay, so now it's roughly in place. Like I said, I get it roughly in place first and then I come back in with the tweezers, hold it in position where I can manage the wire. And that way then I can come back in and 100% secure it into place. That just allows me to work with it a lot easier. <clears throat> it, may be, it may be different for you you could do it a completely different way but for me this is the easiest way i've found to do it and my board is a little bit loose on the desk here because at the moment <clears throat> with the new bench power supply it's kind of difficult to fit everything on so the microscope is sat on top of the bench power supply which means i've got well, I've got more working distance, but the microscope can't accommodate for the extra working distance for the camera's sake. So I've got the board on top of my iFixit kit at the moment. That will be solved in a couple of days when I get my new rotating desk clamp for the microscope. So I am taking care of it. Okay, and that appears to be in position there. Appears to be nice and secure. Okay. <clears throat> so let's just trim that final jumper wire then. There we go. 
Okay, time to clean up. So I can zoom out now. So I'll show you what I mean. Same zoom level. And I have to adjust the focus considerably to be able to get it into focus. And there's no way you can run jumpers that small from that distance. Or at least I can't. So, so I had no choice but to put the board on top of something to be able to work on it. But that should be good. So what I'm going to do now is just clean this off. And then like I said I'll secure those jumper wires in place with some conformal coating. And then hopefully we're good to go. So one thing you need to do with conformal coating is just make 100% sure that the motherboard is as clean as it can be because conformal coating does not like any kind of contaminants so you want to avoid anything being on the board at all just give it as many wipes over as you can with isopropyl alcohol or even ultrasonic cleaning before you end up putting, it, putting the conformal coating on and conformal coating is absolutely necessary for this job you will not get by without it uh, yeah, I don't think it would ever hold for anyone without conformal coating or at least not in my experience anyway okay so now that we've done that what I'm going to do is I'm going to make 100% sure that these are all connected using the tweezers and then I'm going to add some conformal coating but first I do need to make sure as well that it's not got any contaminants or anything on it and that one as you can see, it's a little bit loose, so I'm going to need to come in with the iron and touch that up. Because that middle one is definitely loose. So I'm not happy with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to the micro pencil. So as I can come in on a tighter angle. And then basically just touch that one joint up. And I really do apologise about the background noise. Every single time I go to record a video, the neighbours at the back of me, either the dog barks, or they decided to start doing work on the garden and it is super super annoying but there's nothing i can do because everyone's entitled to do what they want and unfortunately it's just something i've got to live with so yeah there we go sorry about the uh the noise hopefully the audio filters will keep most of it at bay Okay, so let's see if that's any better. Mm, no, I'm still not quite happy with that. Still a little bit loose. And then a big blob decides to fall off the solder and straight onto the board. I'll clean that up in a minute. And I've lost a jumper there. Alright, let's take a look at that. Let's see what's going on with that. So I'm going to heat that up. I will sort out that blob of solder in a minute. It's not causing any problems anyway, so I'm not worried about it. And that one doesn't seem to want to be securing fully. So let's just take a look and see what more we can do with that. So let's just move that jumper wire off. Expose as much of that trace as possible and 
see if we can come back in and get a better joint on that, shall we? And that may be a little bit better. And uh, I just realised you can't see. Whoops. <clears throat> it's kind of awkward to keep the camera into focus or into view when you're doing this kind of work because it is very, very uh, intensive work and you do have to have full concentration to be able to be successful at it. You can't take your eyes off it for a second otherwise you will slip one millimetre and mess it up. <laughs> and I'm not even joking. One millimetre and you'll mess it up. Alright, so let's take a look at this then. So I'm just going to clean this up. And that should be a little bit better. Okay. So this one here is absolutely perfect. This one here is still not that strong this one here is super strong so the reason that I'm obsessing over this is because one weak connection can cause everything to fail maybe not now but later on down the line So you'll notice I've got rid of that. And I'll try again with a fresh trace. Oh, that looks stronger. Look at that. That looks stronger. Okay, so let's take another look. So this trace is not the greatest, but I think that will do. I think that is good enough. All right. So let's just dry that off and then I'm going to trim this middle jumper wire a little bit because we don't really want it hanging over the edge of the groove where the original trace was because otherwise the port's not going to quite sit flat. So we'll trim that down very slightly, there we go. And then I'm going to add some conformal coating to it. So for the conformal coating you really don't need much, so all I do is just get some on the end of my tweezers and just basically paint it on until we've got a nice layer just over the edge of the jumper wire. I have noticed there's some conformal coating on this already. I assume that's just from some exposed trace. And not from an actual damaged trace. So what we'll do is just fill these in a little bit. And I know that's causing these to not be conductive anymore. But that's not a problem because what we're going to do afterwards is we're going to scrape it back so it's just the part that we want conductive is conductive. So once that's done I'm going to take my UV pen and this is actually just a normal 405 nanometer wavelength pen and it's going to cure this solder mask. So I'm going to hold this on here now for about 30 seconds, 40 seconds, and that should be good to go from there. I 
Okay, and that should be cured enough to use for soldering on top of. So let's just take a look. And nice and solid all round. So what I'll do now is just scrape these with the tweezers. Just expose the jumper wire where we need it to be exposed. Which is basically somewhere in line with the rest of the traces. Doesn't have to be exact of course. But a majority. Also I'm going to thin it out a little bit here just so as the port sits a little bit flatter. And then like I said just get rid of the contaminants off the board itself. So what I'll do now is just retin the rest of these pads. Try my best to avoid those jumper wires. And the reason for that is because the soldering iron will pull those out. It's not a permanent it's not a permanent solution with the jumper wires you can't just use the soldering iron willy-nilly on them I'll use a bit of this wire or this uh, solder just preting these traces just to prepare them for the new port smaller tip as possible just to avoid those other traces there we go nice even amount of solder and I'm just going to drag the rest of that solder off get rid of it done the problem with the micro pencil is not much not much solder will stick to it. And that is ready for a new port. So one thing I do want to do before I actually install a new port is I want to give it as best of a chance as possible to actually adhere to the board and to actually make a good contact, a good solid contact with the board. So I'm going to pre-tin the pins on the actual port itself. So I'm going to apply some solder to the pins on the port itself very carefully because there is plastic around the port but I'm going to pre-tin these pads and basically give it as good of a chance as I possibly can to actually make a contact because once the port is installed we can't see these pins here this inner row of pins so we can't access them we can't see them I'll just pre-tin those, give it the best of a chance as possible. But just for good measure, I'll pre-tin these as well, because why not? It doesn't have to be perfect. The hot air and the flux will help it to flow. But just pre-tin them, just give it the best of a chance as possible. You can do this with all the port installed if you want. I choose not to, because... I don't really need to on other ports, on normal port installs, where there's no missing traces. But where there's missing traces, I like to come in with the soldering iron and just add a little bit of solder. That allows it to make a nice contact with the jumper wire and actually solder down properly. And usually it gets done first time. And it actually works first time, usually. So let's get this port installed. Okay, so for this part of the install, I've had no choice but to move the microscope. So now my hands are absolutely filthy as well. So the reason for that is because I can't use hot air for that much, that much time while it's on a plastic surface. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the hot air station at 440 degrees Celsius and 40% airflow. Again, with no nozzle. And I'm going to heat up the area until the solder is pretty much molten. And then I'm going to drop the port on and hope it goes down in one piece. 
I'm just holding the port in the tweezers, keeping it away from the hot air for now, just to keep as little hot air on it as possible. Okay, and I can see the solder melting on that coil there. So now, if I can get my depth perception back, I should be able to push down on the port. Press and hold while I move the hot air away. And hopefully that should be soldered. The key word there is should. But hopefully it should be soldered. Let's give it one more flow. Press and hold, make sure that it's firmly in place. And then I'm going to examine the back pins. So I'm going to try and get a close up shot of this. And that looks to be in the right position. It looks to be straight, nice and flat to the board. And I will just turn up the microscope light a little bit for you there. But it looks fairly straight, it looks flat to the board. Looks like it went on pretty much perfectly as far as port installs go. Let's just give these pins a quick nudge. And I am happy with how that looks. And I'm not sure if I've actually come across on camera, so I'll do it again. Like I said, it's very hard to keep the camera in view and concentrate on the repair at the same time. But that appears to have gone as good as it can possibly have gone. So I'm overall happy with that. So I'm going to give it a clean and then I'll get to testing. and more than enough solder on those back legs i'm happy with that no melting of the port so i'm overall very happy with how that looks okay so one important thing that i should probably point out is when you do any kind of a port install the best thing to do is to clean inside the port as well because you're always going to get some sort of flux build up in there and you do need to excuse my hands I did have to move the microscope about it's been in the workshop for over a year so it's a little bit dirty never mind that was clean when I started the video I promise <laughs> but never mind okay so what I'm going to do now then is I'm going to get this back together enough for testing and then we can we can see what's going on with it and see if it works. So basic testing for me is if I just move that out of the way and just move that out of the way, we can bring this back where all of the screws and things are. And this is a microfiber cloth to protect the screen. So I'll put this here because I don't want to scratch the customer's screen while I'm doing the repairs or while I'm taking it apart. I mean, obviously we don't really use the, we don't really have the screen near us while we're doing the actual repairs, but while we're taking it apart, putting it back together, testing that sort of thing, we don't want to be damaging the screen because if we damage it, we have to pay for it. Or at least that's how it should work. So basic testing for me is just the LCD, the backlight, the power button, the battery, and that's pretty much it. And that gives that allows me to do a basic test and make sure that everything is working as it should. Like so, for example, make sure that it's charging, which is the issue that this is having. And also, it's going to allow me to test it on the dock as well. Now, I could sit here and spend an extra 
five minutes putting all of the ribbons in but if I, if it doesn't work then that extra five minutes could go towards figuring out why so i choose not to put everything in on the first attempt just in case just in case and it has saved me a little bit of time in the past but then I've also done it in the past where I've put it back together fully and then it can come back to bite me so now I'll just try and avoid it as much as I can and just put what I need to put in to see it working so I'll just connect up the basic things I will connect up the fan just because it's there okay let's turn it on let's see what's going on see if it's charging so it turns on or at least it appears to turn on let's hope we don't get any error codes and we don't so let's see if it wants to charge or at least read the charger and it does so that's reading that it's charging that way is it going to charge this way it does so it's charging both ways absolutely fantastic so now to finalize this repair or to confirm this repair we need to test it on the dock because for it to be fully working it needs to dock so let's take a power cable here and a HDMI cable. I'm going to connect it up to what I believe should be the TV, I think, or is it the capture card? Which one am I going for? It's the capture card. I don't know if the capture card is connected up properly. Like I said, I haven't been in here for about a week. So if it doesn't work on here, I'll test it on the TV as well. Hopefully it works on the capture card so I can show you guys on a normal full screen. But let's see, shall we? We'll get a green light on the dock, which means that it's recognised. As you can see there. So let's switch over to the capture card and we'll find out. And uh, it's not reading on the capture card, so let's just turn the TV on and I'll try it on the TV instead. And there we go. Let me just flick over to the side camera. I'm not going to show my face, guys. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to show that. So that's going to standby, but if I plug that back in, and there we go. So as you can see there, I know it's not the greatest of views there, but you can see there that that is docking absolutely perfectly. First time. Um, I don't want to show my face because it is still swollen on one side. Um, but yeah. Uh, I am super happy with that. Let me switch to the other camera. And there we go. So that is pretty much that. So overall, not a bad repair at all. Um, four damaged traces in total, but three of them needed replacing. Or rather, two of them needed replacing. One of them I did for good measure. Uh, just because it wasn't any more work to actually do that one jumper. All that's left for me to do now is to put this back together and give it a full test, but it should be working absolutely fine. Um, but for now, for the purposes of this repair, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to get this camera or this microscope out of the way. Um, <laughs> this bench is a complete mess, but never mind. Um, absolutely fantastic way to come back to to work after, uh, after a week of being in incredible pain, to be honest. Um, super, super happy. So glad that I could get Mike this console working and his cup customer is going to be super happy as well but that's going to be it for this video guys if you do have any comments or questions like i said leave them down in the comment section down below if you want to support the channel if you do enjoy what i do you can of course become a patreon supporter uh, the links will be in the video description you can also click on the amazon links where i'll get a little bit of a kickback every time that you buy something through one of my links um, 
and you can also become a channel member by clicking on the join button down below but that's going to be it for now thank you very very much for watching until next time i'll see you later bye for now